So we're talking about discrete random variables. Now this is something that you've actually done before. Let's take a coin and toss it three times in a row. When you do this, we can show what's happening with a tree diagram. So the first coin can be heads or tails. The second coin can be heads or tails. And of course, the third coin can be heads or tails. Now what we're left here is eight different options. So for example, we could have heads, heads, and heads. Or this one here might be heads, then tails, then heads. There are eight different things happening here. Are you familiar with this kind of thing because you've done probability before? Now let's consider just what happens, the number of heads that you get from these three coin tosses. We're going to summarize that information in a table that looks like this. Now the number of heads might be 0, or 1, or 2, or 3, and we can find the probability of each of those. So, what is the probability of getting 0 heads from these three coin tosses? Well, the only line that this happens on is this one right here, tail, tail, tail. So there's only one way to get 0 heads. And there's eight total things that can happen. So the probability of that happening is one in eight. What about the probability of getting three heads? Perfect. Well, there's only one way to do that all along this line here. So I've done that one and that one. So all along here. So the probability of that happening is one in eight. The other two are more confusing. The probability of getting one head, uh, that happens on this one here. It happens on that one there and it happens on that one there. So that's three different ways you can get one head. So that's three and eight. And then the probability of getting two heads are the rest of those, and one, two, three. The probability of that happening is three in eight. Congratulations, you have just done a discrete random variable question. So in this case, the random variable was the number of heads. We'll just call that x. Right, that's a random variable. It's a variable that arises from a uh, some form of chance, some random occurrence. Now, why the word discrete? It's because these values must take discrete values. You can't get half of a head here. You can't get three quarters of a head. You have to have discrete countable values. And you've done statistics before, so you understand what the word discrete is. There's a nice little definition you can write down there if you like. Now, I just want to show you a little bit of notation here. Now, the number of heads here is a lowercase x, but the probability, we need to write this a little bit differently. PR for probability, bracket, capital X equals lowercase x. So what does that mean? The random variable is the number of heads, and we show a capital X for that. And then the lowercase x are the values that the random variable can take. The probability that the random variable number of heads is equal to zero. The probability that the random value number of heads is equal to one. So the capital X is the random value and the X is a specific value of it. I do want to show you another way to show this same information. You can draw it in a nice little graph like this here. So we can see the number of heads, zero, one, two, or three. And the probability of each of those occurring is zero, one, two, or three. So it's a um, discrete random distribution, and this is what the distribution looks like. Be aware that some software might show it looking a little bit like this, but the idea is the same. There are two key ideas that I need you to take away from this little table here. One of them is that these are probabilities, right? So those probabilities need to be between 0 and 1. You can't have a negative probability for any of these, and you can't have a probability like 1.1 or 1.3. Something has a probability between 0 and 100%, between 0 and 1. The other thing you need to take away from this is that if you add up all of those values, the answer will be 1, and that's always the case when it comes to a discrete random variable distribution. If you add them all together, you'll get 1, because something had to happen. So some, the probability that something happens is equal to 1. What I've just said can be summarized in those notes right here, so feel free to write those ones down. Now that we've done that, let's do a question. Uh, now this question is a little bit different to the previous one, because the previous one was about theoretical probability, flipping coins, whereas this is some data that was collected from a class and how many siblings they have. All right, let's complete the following probability distribution table. So the x values, the number of siblings people can have are between 0 and 5, so we're going to fill in 0 to 5 along there. Alright, so what's the probability of someone having 0 siblings? 
Well, we know three students from the class had zero siblings, but how many kids were in the class in total? Adding up the students, we get 24 students. So the probability of a student picked from this class at random of having zero siblings is three in 24. And you might be looking at that saying, oh, you can simplify that. And you absolutely can. And we can fill this in as one in eight. Now I'm gonna keep both of those values because as you'll find in a minute, it can be useful depending on what you're doing to use three in 24 or one in eight. All right, the next one here, uh, six out of 24, which is one quarter. The next one here, same again, six in 24, which is one quarter. The next one, three in 24, which we already know is one eighth. This next one, five in 24, which doesn't simplify neatly. And finally, only one student had five siblings, one in 24. Now, if we were to take all of these probabilities and add them together, we would hope that the answer would be one because it's got to be for a discrete random variable distribution. The top question you might get asked is calculate the probability the student has four siblings, probability that x equals four. So this little bit of notation is something you've got to get used to. And this is really simple because we're just reading it off the table. The probability that the random variable is equal to four is um, five in 24. I promise they're gonna get harder than that. You might get asked something like this, calculate the probability that x is less than three, that someone has less than three siblings. So looking at our table here, we can see that the probability that someone has less than three siblings would be equal to the probability that they have zero, plus the probability that they have one, plus the probability that they have two. Remember it says less than, so it's not the probability that they have three. So we just add those three together. And this is where it's useful to use the unsimplified fraction because we have three in 24, six in 24, and six in 24. 3 in 24 plus 6 in 24 plus 6 in 24, and that's just 15 in 24. And you can simplify that. There's a 5 in 8 chance that someone has a prop, no, someone having less than 3 siblings in this class. Now you might get asked to calculate the probability that x does not equal 2, that someone does not have exactly 2 siblings. Now, our way to do this would be to take every value that's not 2, so 0, 1, 3, 4, and 5, and add up all of those probabilities. But remember, all of the probabilities add up to 1. So if we do 1 minus the probability that someone has 2 siblings, we'll find out the probability that someone doesn't have 2 siblings. Now, in this instance, it feels easier to use the simplified version because I can just do 1 minus 1 quarter and my answer here is three quarters. You can see that's a lot easier than adding up five different numbers. Last one. Of course, we were gonna throw conditional probability at you. Probably that x is greater than or equal to four, given x is greater than one. How about a formula? We'll use this formula to help us out. So the probability of that given that is equal to the probability of A and B happening, of being greater than four, greater than or equal to four, and greater than one. Now, the probability of being greater than 4 and greater than 1, let's look at the values. Is 0 greater than 4 and greater than 1? No. Is 1? Well, no, it's not greater than 1. Is 2? 2 is greater than 1, but it's not greater than or equal to 4, so that doesn't count. 3? No. 4? Yes. 4 and 5 are the only ones that satisfy A and B. So the probability of that happening, uh, the probability of this plus the probability of this, so that's six in 24. And then we're just doing the probability that x is greater than one. Now the probability that x is greater than one, uh, we could add up two, three, four, and five, but the easy way to do it is one minus zero plus one. And when we do that, we get this horrible stacked fraction here, six on 24 divided by 15 on 24, but then something beautiful happens because it's the same as 6 on 24 times the reciprocal of that, times 24 on 15, and we can just cancel out those 24s, and we're left with 6 on 15, oops, 6 on 15. And if we divide both those by uh, 3, we get 2 on 5. There's our final answer.
for that one. So a far simpler question to finish off on here. Uh, this is a uh, random variable distribution again, and you can see that we have this unknown k value, and we're just being asked to determine the value of k. Now, luckily, we know that if we add up all of the probabilities in this distribution, they're going to add up to 1. That's going to create an equation, and then we just solve it. So there's our equation, k plus k on 2 plus k on 3 plus k on 4 plus 0 0.25 equals 1. Now, I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to move that 0 0.25 to the other side, 1 minus 0 0.25. And then I'm also going to put all of these over the number 12, because then I'll have a common denominator, and I can add them all together. So this one I multiplied top and bottom by 12, this one top and bottom by 6, this one top and bottom by 4, and this one top and bottom by 3. Let's put them all over a single fraction, and while we're doing it, let's do that uh, calculation. On the left-hand side, I get 25k over 12, and on the right-hand side, I get 0 0.75, which is 3 over 4. And now I'll just multiply by 12 and divide by 25, and I'll know what k is. So k is equal to 36 over 100, which is the same as 18 over 50, which is the same as 9 over 25. Our answer here is 9 over 25. Now, of course, you should check that. If you put 9 over 25 for k here, 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 and here, and you add them all together, you should get 1. All right, so that's all we need to know about discrete random variables and discrete random variable distributions, at least for now.